see the picture back there? I like that. The wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, I don't know for every person, but for a lot of us, seeing the faults in others is as easy as falling off a log. Uh, I'm hoping that his head isn't going to hit the log. Uh, there's one contest I haven't tried. The, lo the log rolling. But for us as, as humans, as individuals, it's so much easier to look out at someone else and to be able to easily see their faults than it is for me to see myself. Now I want you to have that in your mind. It's easier to see the faults in others than yourself. As you think about what Jesus says in Luke 6, no good tree bears bad fruit. So he's not talking about necessarily a tree that has ripe fruit and rotten fruit, but he's talking about fruit that's good for you or fruit that would be bad for you. Nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. So you can look at a tree and you can say, I know that's an apple tree, that's a pomegranate tree. Um, for figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person, out of his evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So you know what's on a person's heart. You know what's inside of them based on what they say and how they act. So the question comes for me when I look at this text, whose fruit am I supposed to inspect? Am I to be the person who is constantly watching over you? Am I to be inspecting your fruit? Or should I be inspecting my fruit? Now, look at this similar passage from Matthew chapter 7. Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize who? You'll recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Matthew chapter 12. So back here, you'll recognize them. You look at that person, you'll recognize them. Matthew 12, Jesus says, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. There's going to be an evidence. It will be manifest. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you'll be condemned. So is Jesus saying that we look at other people's fruit or we look at our own fruit? Well, I think there's a dual truth here. I think we need some protection. That's why he says beware of the false prophets. Inside they are ravenous wolves. So you have to have the discernment to look at someone. And he says you'll know their heart by what they say. But he also says to that brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you're evil? So there are two truths. Two equally important truths. When you look at the biblical principle of you can know a tree by the fruit that it bears. We can observe other people that are healthy or unhealthy in our lives. And we can look to see how healthy we are. I think the big temptation is to be a fruit inspector. But we've got to nurture our own heart. We've got to be good gardeners of ourselves. By the way... I looked in Galatians chapter 5, and in the fruit of the Spirit, I couldn't find criticism. Criticism is not a spiritual gift. Long passage here, but you know the story in Luke chapter 18. The Pharisee and the tax collector, and they are at the temple, and they're worshiping. Jesus tells the parable, most importantly, I want you to notice, to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. And they treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed, God, you're lucky to have me, right? 
He says, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. How would you like that in church? You know, people are talking about them. Yes, I'm a, I'm a sinful person. I'm, I'm weak. I, you can ask Tammy. I'm, I'm not a perfect husband. You can ask my kids. I'm not, I'm not the perfect. But at least I'm not like now, right? <laughs> Don't name me, right? So unjust, like this tag, I fast twice a week. How many times were they commanded to fast in the Old Testament? Once, right? The day of Yom Kippur. I give tithes of all that I get, but the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes up to heaven. But he beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. So, to be critical is not a spiritual gift, and it's a temptation. Why is that such a temptation for me to look at you and say, golly, man, look at how bad you are, and then I'm, I'm not so bad. I, I don't have to be reflective. I don't have to look at myself. It's so much easier. So here are a couple of passages to counter that dark side, that bad temptation for me to focus on your faults instead of looking at my own need for growth. Romans chapter 3, all have sinned and what? Fall short of, so how many does that include? Everybody. All of us. None of us. I also like what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 20. Surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. So you know the old saying, don't throw rocks in glass houses. Uh, or if somebody is pretty much in the same boat, well, there's an idiom there, you know, calling the pot, calling the kettle black, right? So we, we can't, we, we, we've got to recognize none of us are perfect. So... When we're looking at the idea of, of fruit, we'll tell you what the tree is like. When it comes to fruit inspections, the Pharisees, they like to judge things like, and I'm talking modern day Pharisees now, not just in Jesus' day. Pharisaical people, they like to judge the fruit and they like to focus in on the ritual or the doctrine. Oh, you don't read this right. You don't do that right. But Jesus says, I want us to look into our hearts. He is more concerned because he says, out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So if there is a discrepancy, if someone says one thing and they're doing another, trust the actions. Um, you're wondering, what's with the moving truck? Well, I'll tell you what's with the moving truck. Um, in our neighborhood... There, there have got to be half a dozen houses for sale. Is that, is that fair, Roddy? I mean, oh, at, least. at least. And um, I was riding my bicycle earlier this week, Monday or Tuesday, and when you come past the park at the bottom of the hill, Preston Park, and you start going up the hill to leave the subdivision, I was really shocked. There was a moving truck. And, you know, it seems like semi-tractor-trailer moving trucks are bigger than regular semi. Like the sleeper cab for the truck driver seems bigger, like they live in there. And the trailer uh, for holding the furniture seems bigger. And he's parked on this hill, and you know, there's some pretty steep hills over there. And he didn't have the wheels scotched. You know, he didn't have anything blocked in. And I thought for sure that truck was going to just come down the hill. But I got to think about this. And the analogy that came in my mind was, if someone in a moving truck says, I'm loading up furniture and I'm taking people out of this house, all I can judge are his words. But I can look and watch. And if the furniture's coming out of the house into the truck, what do I know? <clears throat> he's coming in. Now, if this truck driver says, oh, I'm here to deliver furniture, these people are moving in. But I see the furniture coming out of the house into the truck. What do I know? <laughs> he's a thief. <laughs> Call Kellen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I want that anonymous reward. My name is Craig. That's spelled with a C. R A I. Yeah. So people may say one thing, and we do that as people, don't we? We have good intentions. We really have good intentions. We may say one thing, but if what you see 
and what you hear are different, I want you to know you can trust what you see a lot more than what someone says. So how do I guard my own heart? I, I want to be the type of person who makes sure that I have a, a heart that is pure. How do I guard my own heart? Solomon says in Proverbs 4, Keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. So to be vigilant, you're up, you're watching it, you're guarding it, you're protecting it. And from all of my life, my heart determines the course of my life, determines where I'm going, what I'm doing, who I am. So number one, to guard my heart, I've got to make sure I'm taking in the right things. Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a person sows, that he will reap. What are you planting in your mind? I mean, are you a sports junkie? Right? You sit on the couch and you're going to watch a football game? You watch a football game enough, what are you going to think? You're going to think football. You're going to talk football. That's going to be your life. Right? I'm not saying that's bad. But if that's all you took in, that would be all you would. You couldn't have a conversation, right? Without it just being straight football. Um, if it's entertainment, if that's all, then pretty soon that becomes part of your vocabulary. Whatever we take in the most, whatever we watch, whatever we read, whatever we listen to, whatever influences us, that sets the code. That sets the DNA for our heart. So I've got to be careful what I take in. But then, once I take that information in, what am I meditating on? What do you fill your mind with? And then how do you process it? You might learn a new fact. You might be thinking about something, but as you're driving to work in your car, what's your mind going over? Is it going over worry? Is it going over anxiety? Is it going over strife? The more that you think about the new thoughts, the information you're taking in, and the more you meditate on it, the more it shapes your heart. You've got to be careful where you let your mind go and what you let it dwell on, what you let it meditate on. It's very important. You got about, I don't know why it didn't come up looking like a heart. When I text Tammy, the greater than sign and the three sign, it comes up like a heart. I don't know why I didn't do it on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Value your heart. Listen, I'm all for education. I, I think education is a real important part of our society. Kids go to school. You know, folks continue to be lifelong learners. Amen. Now, we have so many resources at our hand. Whatever you want to study, history, math, whatever, be a lifelong learner. I'm all, I, I really believe education is important. But there are elements to the human being that are more important than just intellectual. Um, Jim, help me out. Who wrote emotional um, intelligence? I know. Daniel, I want to say Goldman. Does that sound right? Daniel Goldman, I think is his name. I know his first name is Daniel. Wrote a book called Emotional Intelligence. And he puts out the idea that successful people, and he's measuring that, I, I would, I'm fine saying, by worldly standards. People who can, can keep a job and do well and excel in their job. People who are accept, successful aren't just IQ high. They don't just have a high intellectual quota or quotient, whatever IQ stands for. But they have an emotional IQ. And that really determines a lot in your relationships. And so, yes, education, filling your mind, that's important. But value your heart. How do you deal with people? Time and time again, raising kids, disciplining the boys. Tammy and I would talk later. And she'd say, you know, I agree with what you said. But I didn't like how you said it. Because I didn't worry about my heart at all times in my life. It's not always what we say, but it's what? It's how we say it. And what shapes how we say it comes from the heart. And then remain teachable. We all have room for growth in our people skills, in our heart, in our, in our spiritual life. And what do you take into the afterlife? When you die and you go into the next world, it's the heart. The soul, right? The person who we are inside. So the heart is really important. Now, one rotten apple can spoil the whole bunch, right? So when do I inspect someone else's fruit? When do I get to label their bushel as that's good fruit, 
That's bad truth, because that's what we really want to know, right? Well, the role of the community in transformation. Matthew chapter 18. If I recognize some bad fruit, I'll talk to that person. If they don't want to listen to me, well, then I need to bring a friend with. If they don't want to listen to me and my friends. Sometimes we need to empower the whole group to say, the fruit that's on your tree, it's not good for you. And it's not good for everyone else. But I also, before I'm going to inspect someone else's fruit, I need to be open to people inspecting my fruit. I can't always say, here's what's wrong with your fruit, without being someone who people can speak to and say, let's talk about your fruit. Jesus says, you hypocrite. Oh, wow, that's a hard, I'll just skip that past. We don't want to read that, right? <laughs> you hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, then you'll see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So you've got this big beam, a plank that could hold the roof up, and it's in your eye. And the other person has a small speck of sawdust in their eye. Let me get that out of your eye, but you can't even get to him because that big log is going to hit him in the head. They won't have to worry about that speck because you're going to knock him out with your own log, right? So care fronting, care enough to confront someone in love. But there has to be a relationship already. If I want to talk about the fruit that's on your tree, the first thing that I talk to you about can't be the bad fruit. I've already got to have a good relationship. And it's got to be overly abundant. People have got to know, yes, your best interest. That's what I have in mind. But can I really talk to you? Can I really sit you down and say, can I really talk to the person who's been missing church, right? Here, well, where are they? They're, they're not here. Let me talk to you. Can I really do that without asking permission? Do you let people speak truth into your life if you don't want to hear from them? They may have all the good reasons. It may be very logical. It might be accurate. But sometimes it's healthy to say, can we have this talk? Do you know that I love you? I really love you. And I have your best interest. And I want to talk with you. It's a hard conversation. Can we sit down and talk? Would you like to hear me? And so we've got to get rid of the judgmental. I can't be presumptuous. I can't nag. But I've got to love and I've got to sit down. So fruition, what's at the end of the line? That's the evidence. And a good tree produces good fruit. Evil tree produces evil fruit. And so while Jesus says you can know the false prophets, he also says you need to know your own heart. What type of tree it is your life when you look at your fruits. So let me finish up with these ideas. I think the worst religious temptation is pride. I think that's why Satan fell. I think I have to be careful. I have to guard my heart that I'm not religiously proud. I want to guard my own heart and protect it and fill it with good things and nurture it and let it grow. But I also want to be a mature enough Christian where I can help you guard your heart and cultivate, and you can grow. And at the end of the day, when I look at the Gospels especially, Jesus comes down hardest on the hypocrites. Amen? And so may we personally uh, be consistent and, and live accurately what we believe to be true, uh, but making sure that our hearts are as healthy as possible.